AMD versus Nvidia, the Clash of Titans. It's uh, almost over as a fight. A while ago I did a video talking about the situation between the two companies and why Nvidia was superior to AMD. But that was before AMD got crushed in uh, in 2015 in terms of market share. And it's probably not going to recover from that, at least not easily. They would need to pull off miracles if they would want to recover from that. So. What happened is that in three quarters of 2015, Q2, Q, uh, Q3, and Q4, AMD's market share dropped below or close to 20%. For two of these quarters, it was below 20%. For the last quarter, Q4, it was to over 21%. And that's because they cut prices across the board in holiday season and they sold the uh, low-end cards. And they did recover a bit of that market share, just a bit, a couple of percentage points from NVIDIA. But not enough, really, not enough for them. And we do have financial statements from both AMD and NVIDIA. NVIDIA's revenue for 2015 was 4.6 or close to $4.7 billion, whereas for AMD it's $3.9 billion. Now, for AMD, that's actually really, really bad news because uh, their revenue in 2014 was $5.5 billion, now it's 3.9. And this is the first time, I think, where AMD has gone under NVIDIA in terms of overall revenue. Forget income. They've been... <laughs> they, have, they have been operating at a loss for years already and things have only gotten worse in 2015. So AMD is going down the drain and NVIDIA has essentially secured the monopoly. Obviously... It's going to take a couple of years for them to be really secure with that monopoly, for them to uh, effectively become the Intel when it comes to GPUs, and then you're going to get the same situation with Intel. Now, people talk about increased prices, but not really. That's not going to happen. What's bound to happen, however, is that you're not going to see more pi price cuts. You're going to see price stagnation. And when it comes to performance, you know, people have been talking a lot about how... Um, G, uh, CPU performance hasn't been increasing all that much in terms of games, but the reason behind that has nothing to do with the CPUs themselves, it's rather just the way the games are made and the priorities developers take. Like, right now, you can run every game essentially on PC at max settings if you have enough uh, juice in your um, GPU with an i3. No, can't, you can take any game that's multi-platform and run it, run it on an i3 and you'll run it better on this PC with a lo very low-end uh, GPU uh, 950 or 750 Ti. You'll run it better at 1080p, higher frame rate, higher settings than the same game on consoles. It will look better, it will run better with an i3 and a 950 or 750 Ti if they're overclocked. So. Hell, even if they're not overclocked, you can get similar performance in the prices. You, you can get this PC cheaper than a console or, you know, about the equivalent price. Depends on, obviously, on your country. Depends uh, on what kind of components you're getting and what kind of console you're talking about. But suffice to say, mo many games are going to be on console and most games actually are, are multi-platform. And uh, obviously, they're not going to make three different versions, you know, there there's very few cases where that happens and generally they don't do a good job with it. So, um, because the console CPU is crap, that's what they work with. And even if we're, we were just talking about PC exclusives, they still have to account for all the people that have lower end CPU, so they're obviously not going to push that too hard. That's the reason. Because game companies just don't use the horsepower that's available on uh, current CPUs. I have an i7-3770K, I have little reason to upgrade from that to a higher end system hell i and you know it's it's bothersome to do so whereas with the gpo the situation is not going to be the same it's just not going to happen in the same way because different components different situations scalability uh works a lot better on the gpu than a hell lot better than on the cpu uh so you know getting more we're probably going to see increases in performance you know, con constant decreases in performance. Hell, NVIDIA is talking big about Pascal. You know, even though they've gained this monopoly, essentially, the sky hasn't fallen yet. You know, we, we, we have to wait a couple of years for it to really develop to see how the situation is. If the situation stays as is for a couple more years, AMD is 
very likely going to go under and Nvidia is going to you know uh, be left in the GPU market and then then things get really interesting we'll see what they do but for for now Nvidia is talking really big about Pascal the performance increase um, on that uh, on that lineup of cards that are coming out this year and I mentioned that AMD did better in the final quarter of 2015 but that's because well you know one argument you can make and this is an argument I had with someone recently is like you should probably wait if you're buying a, a GPU at least an Nvidia one because they're coming out in a couple of months new generation and then you're gonna see a lot of people that have max current Maxwell cards at least higher end ones selling them off and buying the new uh, the new lineup at least uh, that's what I've been doing for several years. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that for Pascal or wait for another year. You know, I have a 980. I'm not particularly happy about selling it uh, secondhand. But anyway, just uh, just a point to do, to make there. Uh, obviously, there is the discussion about DirectX 12, but that's not relevant at the moment. I mean, sure, you know, there are worrying signs and there are things to consider when it comes to that. Nvidia put a lot of money and effort into making good DirectX 11 drivers. There's an article in the description of this video from Digital Foundry talking about that and talking about DirectX 12. And they're essentially caught to their pants down for now with regards to DirectX, DirectX 12. But, but that's not relevant for now because of the situation in DirectX 12. It's gonna, you know, for all the titles that have you know, said that they're gonna have DirectX 12. Only, you know, only a couple have actually implemented it well. For the rest, uh, not so well. Now, if you can make a title DirectX 12 only, Windows 64 bit, Windows 10 64 bit, then yes, there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot of good things that can come out of that, but that's just not gonna happen for a couple of years. Windows 10 right now is the most used uh, operating system for gaming. Uh, the latest Steam hardware survey, um, statistics are not out yet the ones for March but since Windows 10 was increasing its uh, sh market share over the last couple of months constantly then it's very likely gonna uh, you know close that gap because it's a very small difference right now you know it there was a very small difference for February in March it's I would bet my hat that uh, that Windows 10 turns out to be the most popular gaming OS and Windows 10 64 bit important to know that you know a lot of games are switching to 64 bit and you're gonna see over the next couple of years DirectX 12 titles how long it takes to actually implement DirectX 12 properly in the game so that you see a real advantage to it as opposed to the clusterfuck that we're getting right now remains to be seen you know the biggest game that will have DirectX 12 is gonna be Star Citizen whenever that comes out we don't have a definite uh, release date for it Squadron 42 and then Star Citizen that's gonna be very interesting to see and that's obviously a game that can have an impact because it's a big game but the games so far that have it that have DirectX 12 either implemented poorly or don't matter for the most part or you know they're not as relevant as say something like Star Citizen. The Six Mankind Divide is gonna be quite relevant though which is coming out later this year and it is gonna have DirectX 12 support I guess we'll have to wait and see if uh, they implement it properly there or if they bungle it because rise of the tomb raider they bungled it with rise of the tomb raider and the same people that are i believe the same company that was handling the pc that handled the pc version for rise to tomb raider is handling the pc version of the six mankind divided they did a good job in general with pc release but they screwed up directx 12 and rise of the tomb raider suffice to say anyway so that's how the situation is and why is that so well in 2015 Nvidia had this per marketing campaign, you know, they got away with the, you know, they managed to convince people that the GTX 970 is the best video game card out there, which is kind of inaccurate, you know what, I like Nvidia, but the 970, because of the memory problems, I can't say it's the best one you should pick for gaming, it has a problem, it has a pretty big problem especially for someone who's buying it for a long time, you know, someone's buying it and hoping to hold on to it for several years. Games are gonna use more and more memory, and that's a problem. But te technology and all these technical details, they don't matter. Perception matters, marketing matters, and on a marketing level, Nvidia won. You know, they got game bundles with The Witcher 3, with MGS5, and even Arkham Knight, until that turned out to be a pile of shit, right? 
and recently they had the division uh, before that came out so you're getting a video game card with the video game with a popular video game you know MGS5 big game Witcher 3 game of the year won the most awards last year and probably the most awards ever a video game has won apparently at least that's the claim made that's actually important and on top of that you know and there's the perception that Nvidia offers more value for the dollar there's it's hard to argue with that when they give you a free uh, full game uh, with your GPU and big games at that and uh, there's the perception you know they have the better drivers and you get shadow play as well you know for me as a youtuber and for other people as well that do stuff on youtube nvidia is the go-to company for these reasons you know they're they're considered at least from my perspective they're just the better pick like you know i can get better drivers better support in a company that is pulling putting in more, a lot more resources and effort into actually making sure that games run well on their hardware than the opposition. I mean, that's just the perception. You know, it's not quite true for all titles, but you know, that's the way I personally view it. That's the way a lot of people view it. Feel free to disagree, but that won't change the perception that a lot of people have uh, with regards to this. And you know, shadow play, you know, some people would say, oh, shadow play is relevant as recording software. You mean the recording software that has the smallest performance impact of any recording software out there? Seriously, I've tried a lot of them. DX Story, Bandicam, Fraps, like, uh, OBS, XSplit, etc, etc. Shadow play is simply put the best when it comes to performance quality. Uh, quality and file size like it gives small file sizes compared to anyone else it gives really good quality uh, I mean sure it's not quite as good as you know something that's gonna have that's gonna consume 10 times or even in extreme cases 100 times the size on your hard disk but you know it's really good enough and because of you to compression then that ultimately doesn't matter all that much as much as you might think because YouTube will compress your videos and well to be honest doesn't matter if you're you know if you're recording a video and your aim is to upload it to youtube then you need a manageable file size otherwise you will have to render it and if you're rendering it you know i record videos and i generally just upload them to youtube uh if you're rendering it and in that situation having the lower file size is perfectly fine not because you're not going to take the original file if it's much larger and upload that directly to youtube unless you have some insane internet connection more often than not you'll have to render it and you'll lose quality even with the rendering and then there's the whole youtube compression thing so it ultimately doesn't matter all that much it runs well it's very compatible with most games out there uh you know it has superb support from nvidia it lacks certain features they're working on that but that's the thing they're working on that they're putting support in it they care about this because it's tied to the their game stream technology it's tied to the nvidia shield so they have an interest in it and you know you have their them doing with the, what they're doing with game stream what they're doing with geforce experience in, in general uh, with the nvidia shield as well nvidia has a lot of things going for it one of the main reasons I actually would be very hard pressed to pick an AMD card is purely just because of Shadowplay. It is that good of a program. As someone who's been doing this for over half a decade and I've gone through numerous recording programs, Shadowplay is the most stable, um, best performing recording program that I've used. It has audio issues, it has, um, it lacks some features like not, you know, they need to add chat uh, for Twitch streams, YouTube streams. Uh, chat in so that that you can see it while you're in the game they need to add the ability for you to rename uh, your stream titles and a, a couple of other things but overall it is simply put the best program out there on a number of levels it's it lacks it just lacks the features of other programs so that's one big point in nvidia's favor and there are other big points and ultimately, it will. It did work out in Nvidia's favor, and it will continue working out. Now, if they screw up with Pascal, and they still come up short in terms of DirectX 12, and they continue coming up short for a number of years as DirectX 12 becomes actually relevant, then they're gonna have a problem. For now, however, Nvidia is at the top. They have earned more revenue than AMD, and just consider that AMD is. Uh, you know, it, it has a very diversified portfolio compared to NVIDIA. Sells a lot more products, sells the CPUs, right? 
the fact that they're earning less revenue than Nvidia does, that's a big problem. And you know, something had to give eventually, something had to give. You couldn't have a company like AMD just operating at loss for years, their stock market collapse, their, you know, their uh, downsizing of staff uh, that worked, uh, j just in general, downsizing of staff in general, something had to give. And in 2015, something did give. Now, what's gonna happen in the future remains to be seen, but the Fury series was not the saving grace that people made it out to be. Before the Fury series, the AMD fanboys were arguing, oh, well, this is gonna, you know, we're gonna recover, yeah, AMD's gonna recover with this. It didn't, it didn't help them all that much, to be honest, nor did the 300 series all that much. So that's the situation on the GPU market right now between AMD and Nvidia. Nvidia Ascendant, getting close to securing complete market dominance and be going down the drain i guess we'll have to wait and see what the future holds but it's probably not going to be the doom and gloom people have made it out to be for years uh for a number of reasons you know i wouldn't expect prices to increase because you know you can't just <laughs> even if amd goes under i wouldn't expect prices to increase because a the consoles and even if you don't factor in the consoles the previous generation you know if if you're releasing a new GPU that doesn't have a significant a significant imp uh, improvement in terms of performance compared to the last series to justify that cost increase, people are gonna buy it significantly less. Nvidia knows this, just basic economics here, right? Now, obviously I do hope that Nvidia gets their shit together when it comes to DirectX 12, but Maxwell, was never really designed for DirectX 12 and again it's not something that's going to be relevant for at least a couple of years and that's the best case scenario <laughs> how long did it take for DirectX 11 to be white to be used uh, by developers or to go into widespread usage by developers I'll tell you the last year or 2014 if you want to be generous 2014 2015 that's when it happened until that point you know there were still there were still plenty of problems and there were still a lot of developers not really utilizing um, DirectX 11 properly. Obviously with DirectX 12 the situation is different because you've got Microsoft pushing Windows 10 heavily and you do have DirectX 12 on the Xbox One.